Hey there, I recently reviewed this, the Nike Invincible 3. Lots of people made interesting comments and I thought I would try and address them in some detail and compare the Nike Invincible 3 to the Nike Invincible 2. And a little bit of the one thrown in. I made this video because I did want to delve into some of the comments in detail. So I did a bit more running and I did a bit more measuring and uh, Liam did a bit more sawing of some shoes, which we'll get to. So there are chapter markers down below so you can skip through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. IP commented this about the Nike Invincible Ones. I donated the V1 after a few days. I found it to bounce me up, but not forward. Also, the instability made my knees feel like jelly. Forefoot was also not wide enough and I had pressure on my toe. So I'll try and address those in this video, some of the testing I did, some of the cutaways. So let's have a look at some more comments. Taline said, I think the increase in stack height is actually coming from the Strobel board included in this version, which is present in most shoes, which is true. V1, V2 didn't have the Strobel board. That's true. We've Liam has sawed these in half. We'll go through the Strobel board. The thin insole was right on top of the Zoom X foam. I also think it adds to the stability gives more structure and I totally agree with that and then I think I'll probably like it on the foot so I've I've Liam has sawed the some more shoes in half so we can see a strobel board sawn in half so we come to that Tal and I also asked about the heel lockdown I didn't find it particularly difficult he suggested the runner's loop and I did try that and it does work but actually I found uh, when I was running around the park uh, at the weekend on a long run just tying them fine but making sure I tied them properly worked fine for me. Martin disagreed me about the softness of the foam he says disagree V1 and V2 are way softer they wrecked the Invincible sadly not the same fun feeling I'm rather rocking the Prime X strong now so again I'll come to the foam in the forefoot. Orlock also agreed with Martin saying I fully agree he loved the V2 but the new V3 is okay and good for impact protection on easy slow not long runs and that's about it. So again I went in a long run to try and again see what I could make of it. Talking about the upper first one of the commenters described it as being like cardboard which I thought was pretty accurate. This is the upper it's the the laces are much more difficult to pull through than the previous iterations. It's not as comfortable um, around the, the heel this sort of edge isn't as nice it's harder to tie the laces I much preferred this which is version 2 and actually my favorite would be version 1 so yeah the upper in the shoe is definitely for me not as good as in the earlier versions the base of the Invincible 1 and 2 are the same it's the uppers that are different and in the Invincible 3 the current version the uh, upper and the base have changed Nike say that the heel and midsole are slightly wider in the later versions and that there are taller foam stacks. So we'll delve a little bit into that. I decided to measure the width of the shoe using this digital calipers. So what I found now, the first thing to say is my shoes are UK size 12, US 13 male and EU 48. So they're a large shoe and obviously not all shoes are going to be the same. And depending on where exactly you measure them, you know, you, you get different results. But effectively the, the Invincible 3 is 135 millimeters wide at the forefoot, 113 at the back, whereas the Invincible 2 is 131 millimeters at the forefoot and 111 at the back. So a couple of mil difference in the back and, and about four at the front. So, you know, a little bit wider. And of course you're measuring the overall width and the, the shoe is curved, but when you put the pressure on it will lay down flatter. But yeah, it has got a little bit wider. It's the stack height of the foam that has principally changed and Nike say in the Invincible 3 it's 40 millimeter stack at the back with a 9 millimeter drop and in the Invincible 2 it's 36.6 millimeters at the back with a 9 millimeter drop meaning the forefoot in the 3 is 31 millimeters and the forefoot in the 2 is 27.6 millimeters so yeah it's considerably higher well considerably 5-6 mils at the forefoot and at the back. I weigh all my shoes when they come in out of the box before I put them on because once you start wearing them you can add weight by adding dirt and obviously when you run you wear off some of the rubber. So this shoe is 375 grams or 13.25 ounces when it came out of the box and funnily enough this one's the identical weight 375 grams 13.25 ounces. So they're the same weight in each of these shoes. There was a comment that the new one felt heavier Maybe it does, maybe it's different in different sizes, but in my shoes, it's exactly the same weight. 
This is a cutaway of the uh, Invincible ones. And you can see if I take out the liner here, you can see that the foam is right there. The shoe is, is glued directly onto the foam. The upper is glued directly onto the foam. In the case of most shoes, there's a struggle board as pointed out by Tolliday. So to look at the struggle board, here's the uh, cutaway of the Hoka Mac 4. So uh, here we are. And again, I'll take out the uh, liner and then you can see this board sitting on the top of the shoe here. It's got some holes in it, but it's sitting on top of the foam and you can feel that it's quite stiff. Now, Tolonaise, right? When you take out the liner of each of the shoes, take the liner out of the Invincible 3, you can see that there's something on top of the foam, whereas in the Invincible 2, you can see that it's clearly just the foam. But when you push it down, so if you push down on the heel, you can feel the board at the top of the shoe in the way that you can't here. This is much softer feel to your thumbs when you push down. So to get back to Martin's comments about softer, certainly when you're doing a thumb press, you can certainly feel that this is a much softer shoe. I decided to do a little bit of running testing in them. So I ran 5K in each of the shoes, then I did a couple of sprints to see what sort of power I could get in or out of the shoes. And then I sort of ran at my marathon pace to try and see, did I notice any difference? In that overall the thing was not hugely conclusive. I went out first for 5K in this, the Invincible 2, and then I did 5K in the Invincible 3. And I didn't notice much difference in the pace or the feel. These were slightly faster. Um, the data doesn't show a huge amount. I wasn't trying to run at a particular pace. I was just running 5K to see how I felt and did I notice some things, which I did, which I'll come to. But I then did some sprints, so I, Following on from the 5K in these, which were slightly faster than the uh, um, than my Invincible 2s, I did some sprints, and effectively I got a tiny bit more power, but ah, they were not enough to be d definitive. I mean, both shoes, the performance was pretty similar. So what did I find out when I ran in my local park? Well, I found out that this ran slightly faster. I ran, or I ran slightly faster in it. It was the second shoe I ran in. I wasn't timing what I was doing. I was just going out running five laps, which is just over 5K in one shoe, followed by the other. And this was slightly faster, but I wouldn't read too much into it. The one thing that I did notice is there's a lot less noise in this shoe. The Zoom X is a noisy foam and somehow by Adding the uh, struggle board onto the shoe, I think it has tightened it up a little bit more and certainly it felt less noisy. This is a sort of squelchy, noisy shoe, not as noisy as the Alpha Fly, which also has a lot of Zoom X, but yeah, it felt less noisy and that was to be welcomed. There was a lot more control in the shoe. That's the one thing I found. So somebody had said, you know, the taller stacks going around 90 degree bends, um, I don't typically like to go around 90 degree bends, there's one in the park, at uh, speed in a tall stack shoe. But of course, the, this is a very wide rear and a wide forefoot. So, so although the shoe is taller, it's wider and I found it more stable. And again, I think the struggle board has made it just that bit more control in the shoe. I went for a two hour long run at easy pace in the Invincible 3 on Sunday to see what it was like over a long distance. It was fine. I had absolutely no problems. I don't like the upper, in, certainly not in comparison to the Invincible 2. I could notice it in the park. It was, it was much easier to put on the Invincible 2. This, this is not as easy to get on. It is like cardboard, but you know, if you're going out for a two hour run, it's not going to take you that long to get it on and get it, get it set. And once it was set, it was fine. It is the struggle board and the different foams have changed the shoe. I still find it very soft and the difference between the two is not that noticeable for me. Certainly not noticeable enough that if I was looking for my softest shoe, I'd pick something else. It would still be this. I prefer the version three overall. I like the fact that there's a little bit more control. There is as I said previously, there's more foam, but there's less flex. And that for me is an improvement. So uh, now if Nike could only change the upper back for version four, that'd be an even greater improvement. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you did the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some ready videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.